we go now to St. Paul, Minnesota, where security at that state capitol has also been increased. The mayor, Melvin Carter, is here with us now. Good morning to you, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Well, it's good to talk to you again, uh, but we did see the FBI put out a bulletin warning about your city, about your state. Uh, you run the Capitol. What exactly are you preparing for? You know, we did see that bulletin that put us on a state of high alert uh, that we've been on anyways, as we saw, the, we of course watched uh, what unfolded in Washington, D.C. earlier this week. Uh, the FBI is now telling us they don't see any specific credible threats, but we know that we're in a volatile moment uh, we know that we have a president who has continued to egg on uh, these uh, extreme radicals uh, to try to take action. And so we have uh, worked very closely with our Minnesota National Guard, uh, with our state patrol and our St. Paul Police Department to have uh, hundreds of uh, law enforcement personnel on duty, not just to protect our Capitol complex, but our Capitol complex is situated inside a set of diverse and multilingual neighborhoods that deserve that type of protection as well. Well, the FBI reportedly had specifically cited the Boogaloo movement uh, and members of having gone out and basically cased the state capitol uh, last month to identify escape points and defensible positions where violence uh, might occur. Have you seen any evidence of organized groups, of militias active in your area? Where are they coming from? You know, we have seen since Election Day repeated demonstrations at our state capitol as well as at our governor's residence uh, that have included several individuals who have chosen that time uh, to show up with rifles and other firearms uh, in a show of in, to try to be intimidating. Frankly, uh, it's unclear how organized they are. It's unclear uh, how much of that is attributable to the Blue Blue Boys or any other kind of specific group. But again, we're on high alert because of the general volatility. Our FBI is telling us they are tracking those individuals who they think are uh, may have been kind of presenting those kind of specific threats. Uh, and they're at a space right now where we continue to be on a state of high readiness because this moment is just so insane. Uh, but they're telling us they feel confident that we're prepared to handle the public safety mission at our capital and our surrounding neighborhood. You spoke this week about your personal reaction to seeing the Confederate flag dragged into the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. And you said this insurrection was the blossoming of flowers that have been planted and watered very intentionally that existed in our country for a very long time. What are you talking about there? Well, we know, and I, I, I think back to a decade ago when we were having the discussion of whether uh, America is a post-racial society or not, uh, which hopefully we know now is a ridiculous notion. Uh, we know that the, the, the emotions, uh, that the frustration, that the hatred that we saw pour out uh, in front of our U.S. Capitol uh, just a couple of weeks ago uh, has been simmering underneath the surfaces. Uh, and my hope is that we as Americans uh, finally take that head on, uh, finally really meaningfully address the legacy of race that we have in our country, the continued impacts of our history of systemic racism and systemic oppression so that we can build a country that really takes seriously the three words that founded our democracy, we the people, meaning mm -hmm. all of us. You see that racism specifically as a contributing factor to the insurrection. Is that what you're saying? I, I think it's very clear uh, that when we hear people say things like take back our country, it seems to me that they don't understand uh, what America really is, who America really is, and who Americans really are. Uh, it seems to me that as we've had a large conversation about the double standards of law enforcement that have been on display, okay. uh, as we've seen the bias of one elected leader translate into a completely different treatment of people who came out to say yeah. uh, that George Floyd never should have been murdered versus people who come out uh, rallied by our president uh, to try to literally overthrow the capital of the United States. We have seen the impacts of race over in our country over the last year Indeed. play out in ways that I'm hopeful that we can no longer uh, deny. Very quickly, uh, on COVID, your governor accused the Trump administration about lying regarding vaccine doses. Minnesota has fallen behind in being able to distribute what they do have. Do you as mayor need to take control of that as 37 other mayors around the country are asking to get a direct line of supply? You know, we're fortunate that we have a strong relationship with our governor here in Minnesota. We've been working closely on the COVID response. We've worked closely to get National Guard troops uh, mobilized for this weekend. Yeah. Uh, and so we're working closely on this crisis. It does create So you don't a need to take control? It, 
it's another proof point that the president will be dangerous until the moment he leaves office. Uh, yeah. And we're working, we're scrambling. Our health care providers are working hard okay. uh, to develop a plan B so that we can move forward as a state. All right, Mr. Mayor, good luck to you. Thank you for your time this Thank morning. Thank you very much.